Hello, welcome to my Electronics channel. In this video, I want to talk about Norton's equivalent circuits or Norton's theorem. And what Norton's theorem states is that any linear bilateral circuit can be simplified into a two terminal circuit with a single current source in parallel with a single impedance. Basically what that means is if I have a circuit made up of voltage sources, current sources, and resistors or inductors that are represented here by these just uh, general impedances, then I can convert that circuit into a circuit that consists of simply a current source in parallel with an equivalent impedance. And really to be precise for this, since I'm dealing with AC, that shouldn't be an R, that should be a Z for impedance. One thing that should be noted here since we're dealing with AC circuits is that if the circuit contains reactive elements, in other words inductors or capacitors, then the Norton equivalent circuit is only valid at the frequency for which the reactances were determined. I think the best way to learn about Norton's theorem here is to do an example. So let's say I have this circuit here, which consists of this voltage source, an 80 ohm inductance, 40 ohm resistor, and a minus J60 ohm capacitor. And this is all connected to a load, doesn't matter what that load is, I want to find out what the Norton's equivalent of this part of the circuit is. So basically I'm going to be converting that circuit into something that looks like this. A current source with some equivalent impedance connected to that load. So how do I go about doing this process? Well, let's look at that step by step. The first thing to do is to remove the branch across which the Norton equivalent circuit is to be found. So I am looking for the Norton equivalent circuit across this load, so I'm going to remove that branch. Basically just remove the load. The second step is to label the resulting terminals A and B. Call that terminal A and that terminal B. The third step is to set all the independent sources to zero. And what this means is voltage sources become shorts and current sources become opens. So I am going to remove this voltage source. It becomes a short. I don't have any current sources, so I don't need to set any of those to opens. The fourth thing to do is determine the equivalent impedance between points A and B. This is the Norton equivalent impedance, Zn, and note that Zn and Zth are actually the same thing, so if you're doing Thevenin's theorem, everything up until this point is going to be identical. So I'm trying to find the impedance looking back into points A and B, so what it will be is this 40 ohm resistor in parallel with this J80 ohm inductor and this minus J60 ohm capacitor. My Zn is going to be 40 ohms in parallel with J80 plus negative J60 ohms. And that calculation is going to look like this. 40 ohms, combining those together, gives me J20 ohms, and then divided by 40 ohms plus J20 ohms. And that works out to 8 plus J16 ohms. Step number five is to replace the sources and find the short circuit current between points A and B. So I need to short those two points and basically what I want to find out is what is that current right there. Well shorting A and B actually shorts out the 40 ohm resistance so that current that I've designated here which is actually the Norton equivalent current is going to be equal to 10 volts with a phase angle of 0 divided by this J80 ohms in series with this minus J60 ohm capacitor. So that's going to be over a total of J20 ohms and that works out to 0.5 amps with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees. So I've got the uh, Norton equivalent impedance and the Norton equivalent current so this circuit over here, this part of the circuit, can be redrawn as this equivalent circuit
where the source is 0.5 amps with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees in, in parallel with an 8 ohm resistor and a J16 ohm inductor. These are my two points A and B and these are what is connected to the load. So it, the reason that you want to do this is if you're looking at this circuit which has a load connected over here, if that load changes you're going to have to redo a more complicated analysis than if you have the equivalent circuit that looks like this and the load changes. So I hope you learned a little bit in this video and if you want to know more about these types of circuits you can check out my video on Thevenin's equivalent circuits and also on source conversions that allow you to convert between current sources and voltage sources. And I'll see you in the next one.